it used to be that I would suggest Riesling to someone and they would say, but I hate sweet wines. And I would say, well, there are lots of great dry ones as well. You should give them a try. It'll really work well with your dish. And it was really, it was a negotiation just to get someone to look at it. Nowadays, more and more we're finding customers coming in saying, I had a great dry German Riesling or whatever it is. I'd love to learn more about it. Riesling is one of the best wines from a food and wine pairing perspective because and Riesling can be dry, a little bit sweet or very sweet, but a little bit of sweetness in a wine makes pairing with food very easy. So I like to think of Riesling as a sommelier's best friend because it is so incredibly versatile. You can pair Riesling with almost anything. I wouldn't have it with a big piece of steak, but you know any red meat would be difficult. But from a, um, from a food and wine pairing perspective, it is probably the most versatile great varietal. So the first thing I ask customers when they come in and say, I'm looking for a Riesling, is do you want a dry Riesling or a sweet Riesling? Because that kind of starts the conversation. So if you say, I definitely want something dry, that gives us a ton of options. We can look in Germany, if you see the word trocken on a label. We can go to Austria, which are very, very dry, or Alsace, and those are technically dry, but kind of right on the cusp between dry and off dry. So dry, but, but pretty close to that fine line. And I'm just talking about kind of the old world or Europe, but we could certainly talk about Australian Riesling and Riesling from California and other parts of the United States as well. There are some great domestic Rieslings. In fact, I have, my inventory is not all here yet since we just opened three weeks ago, but I think I have five from the United States. So starting over here, the ovum, and then dry Riesling from Hearts and Hands and the Finger Lakes, Herman Weimer also at the Finger Lakes, Bloomer Creek, Finger Lakes. I think that's it domestically. And then there are Australian Rieslings as well. One of my favorites is a producer called Dunhoff, and I always have some Dunhoff in the store. Uh, I have dry, I have slightly sweet, and then I have some dessert wine levels as well. So the first thing I look for is the wine has to be balanced. And we're talking about everything, not just Riesling at this point. But for every selection in the store, it's got to be balanced. So what that means is the fruit, the acidity, the tannins, and the alcohol have to be perfectly unbalanced. I won't accept a wine that's got too much alcohol or too much oak or too much anything. The wine needs to be perfectly balanced. And then I look for complexity of flavor. How complicated is the wine? How many different flavors can I smell and taste? If it's an entry-level price point, it's not going to be the most complex wine in the world, but it's going to be balanced and it's going to taste good. For more expensive wines, I look for more complexity, and then I look for that finish to last for a long time. So if I'm tasting a $50 bottle of wine, I want to continue to taste it for a good minute after I've swallowed it or spit it out. For starters, we taste literally thousands of bottles a year to choose the inventory for the store. So every single bottle is here for a particular reason because I believe that it's truly the very best in class for the region, the price point, the varietal. I don't post ratings anywhere in the store. That's not to say that my wines don't get scores, many of them do. But what I can promise you is that every wine here, I can't promise you'll love every wine that I sell in the store because personal preference comes into play, but I can promise you that every wine in the store is really well made, well balanced, and a great value, whether it's $9.99 or a $100 bottle, it's gonna over deliver.